very strange. Ready to go. Yes. yes. Good afternoon, or should I say good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I can't see anybody on this screen, but I know that there are bubble classes watching live uh, in Meadowside's building at the moment. And there will be other people that will get the chance to watch at home if they want to. And so let's say a special hello and a big Meadowside squeeze to you because we can't see you at the moment. Um, but we're thinking about you. And uh, that's why I've done an assembly as a little present to you to watch today. It's the first assembly that I've done like this. Uh, who knows how many I will need to deliver in the future. Um, and we're just going to try it out and see how it runs uh, for this week and, and um, how people respond to it. So I'm going to hold up something now, which I'm hoping that you can see. It's something that I took off the wall outside my room this morning. Uh, and I think if I hold it a bit closer, you will recognise who that is and what he is saying. So just in case you're not tuned into that very well or it's a bit blurred, it's our old friend, Kid President. And he's saying, oh, sorry, my mind went blank for a minute. He is saying, treat people like they're people, people. Uh, it's something that we quite often used to say to one another at Meadowside. And hopefully something that sticks in our minds uh, as a way to behave and a way to treat other human beings. And of course, we've been in a very weird situation over the last few weeks where some of us may not have seen very many human beings. Uh, we've seen the people in our house and we've seen people when we've been out walking and we've watched TV and watched things online. But we haven't actually seen other human beings. And even when we do see them, we have to keep our distance. We have to keep safe from them. But the one thing that's really important and uh, is obviously that message of treating people like they're people um, and thinking about them as characters, not as uh, in terms of making judgments about them in terms of what they look like, uh, but actually in terms of their characters, their actions. I'm sure that lots of you have seen uh, the news over the last, well, I don't know, week or so in particular, and uh, you will have seen perhaps crowds and crowds of people in places like London and Bristol and America, uh, very, very angry people, uh, very angry uh, either uh, against one another or against things that have happened. Uh, and it's really important, uh, no matter how uh, strongly you feel about uh, the issues that people are talking about and, and how angry you get, that you treat people like their people, you listen to their side of the argument, uh, you interact with them, uh, and you are kind to other people and listen to what they have to say. Um, I took another picture from my wall. Now this one, I'm hoping you may be able to see, but if you can't, I'll read it out afterwards. I have not memorized it. I'll put it, hang on, a bit closer. You might be able to tell your teacher who that is. Uh, you may be able to see his name at the bottom, I appreciate, but you might also recognise him. So that's Martin Luther King. And uh, we've spoken about him in assemblies before. He was a great campaigner against racism and against equality and people being treated as people back in the 1960s uh, in America. And this is a quote, one of his famous quotes, and there are many because he was a man of great wisdom and really simple but straightforward ideas that everyone could understand. And he said, and I'm going to turn it around now so I can read it. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So he and Kid President, although they're saying slightly different things, uh, are encouraging people to behave as human beings. And Martin Luther King is talking about anger, I suppose. He's saying that uh, if you are angry with one another, you're not going to solve anything. 
actually it's only light it's only kindness and goodness that can move things on people do get angry we've seen a lot of that on the tv uh, but it doesn't solve anything it just gives them an opportunity to be angry but at the end of the day hate cannot drive out hate only love can do that so actually kindness and understanding and listening to one another and treating people like they are people people are really the best uh, the best solutions i'm going to read a poem now from the book of hopes I'm not going to read the whole poem and I will tell you why when I get to the end of my extract. But if you want to look at this poem afterwards, uh, it is in the Book of Hopes, which means that it is uh, free online uh, and it's near the end of the book. And the poem is called The Indigo Flamingo. Now, I'm sure you'll have heard the, uh, the word indigo before um, because it's one of the colours of the rainbow, violet, indigo, blue and green. So it's a sort of a dark blue, purple mix, really, the colour indigo. It's quite hard to uh, get an, an exact match if you try to mix the colours together. But basically it's in between purple and blue and it's sort of a mix of the two, really. So this flamingo is not uh, the usual and expected colour because you'd expect a flamingo usually to be pink. Sometimes they're a sort of an orangey pink, but usually uh, pink. This one is indigo. So I'm just going to read you a part of his story. Um, I'm going to have to sort of look down slightly to read it rather than look directly at you. Once in a far off swamp lived a sad little flamingo whose name was Bob. Bob was almost exactly what you would expect from a flamingo named Bob or not. He had long legs. He had feathers. He had the biggest beak in Mozambique. But you might quite probably think that Bob, like his pals, was a snazzy shade of pink. If this is what you think, uh, then no. Bob was not pink, but indigo. The most indigo flamingo you could ever wish to know. That is, he was a sort of purpley blue. Blue like the light of the rising moon. Blue like the blue of the deep lagoon. And did Bob like it? Not one bit. It made him mope and cry. It made him moan and spit. I didn't know flamingos spat. Ugh. I wish, I hope, I wish he'd think that I could not be indigo, but a beautiful pink. Oh, the other flamingos were okay. During the day, they'd chat to him and sing and dance and play. But it was once there was no more sun that being an indigo flamingo became not a lot of fun. See, when it was dark, Bob blended in. His blue wasn't odd then, it was the colour of everything. And then it was like he wasn't there. Then he was suddenly nothing, just part of the midnight air. The others would talk right over his head. They'd trample him sometimes when he went to his bed. Until one night, Bob was moping, singing his sad song. Oh, I'm afraid it doesn't tell me what his sad song is, so I won't make one up today. Anyway, he's singing a sad song. When a great hungry crocodile came sneaking along, Bob was the only one who saw. The others slept calmly on. He heard them whistle and snore. Hey, he shouted, hey, crocodile, get your slithery back and your toothy smile out of our swamp. Go on, get lost, scarper, be gone. The crocodile panicked, its eyes bulging out. It couldn't see anyone, but it could hear someone shout. What was this ruckus, a ghost or some such? The croc didn't know, but he didn't like it much. He turned on his tail, swam fast, swam faster. With several great splashes, he was gone. He had scarpered. Now, 
all the other flamingos, hearing this loud din, woke up and came along to see this most amazing thing. Hooray, they shouted, standing in a row. Bob, you're our hero. Thank goodness you're indigo. Yes, for once Bob was happy to be blue. For once he laughed and smiled. He danced and capered too. Treat people and indigo, uh, indigo flamingos uh, like they are people or flamingos. You get the idea. We need to treat each other as humans, as flamingos, based on our goodness and our character. Uh, if you want to read the end of that poem, I'm afraid I felt it wasn't quite appropriate for assembly, but it does have a rather interesting uh, and not necessarily happy ending, uh, which you can check out at your leisure. Finally, for today, uh, I just wanted to show you a poster. I'm going to hold it up in front of me, first of all. And this poster is up around school. It's one of many, many, many new posters that we've had to put up, reminding people to stay safe. Now, I think all those people protesting in London and Bristol and America uh, forgot all of this. This is all about social distancing. And I like this poster because it reminds you of uh, the fact that you have to stay, if you can, two metres apart from one another. But it measures two metres in lots of different ways. For example, did you know that if you laid out nine and a half pencils from tip to tail, you'd make two metres? So that's how far away from the next person you need to be. Nine and a half pencils away from them. Or you might want to look at it in terms of um, Nintendo Switches, for example. Uh, just over seven and a half Nintendo Switches, if you lay them down next to one another, makes up two metres. I hope nobody at home's got seven and a half Nintendo Switches, but you get the idea. 2.4 skateboards makes up two metres, allegedly. Uh, and 7.35 pigeons in a row. I don't think you ever get seven pigeons standing still all at one time in a row like that. But if they did, they'd be they'd give you the idea of two metres distance. Uh, apparently, 1.71 lightsabers. So not quite two lightsabers. If you were having a lightsaber battle, you and, you know, I don't know, uh, Kylo Ren or Darth Maul or any of those guys. As long as you, you know, kept your distance between lightsabers, you'd be all right. 12 hot dogs allegedly makes up um, two metres. Uh, 20 and a half playing cards. Uh, you could measure that out later if you've got a pack of cards at home. 9.6 toothbrushes. Uh, 34 AirPod cases. Interesting. Not sure how many Mr. Port's, but I reckon if Mr. Port laid down, uh, he'd make almost two metres. Uh, and you could stand, you know, if one person stood, well, now with his hair cut as well, he's got extra hair on the top, uh, you know, one at one end and one at the other, um, and you'd just about be a safe distance apart. One and one tenth, he says. If anyone wants to do the mathematics there and work out how tall Mr. Port is, shouldn't take you too long to do that, but there you go. So two metres is quite a big distance to stay apart from one another at the moment. Uh, and it, it makes life tricky in all sorts of ways, whether you are at school trying to play and work safely, whether you're going to the shops trying to queue up and go in uh, and all sorts of other things that we normally take for granted and that can't happen at the moment because of those um, because of that distance that has to be kept. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, stay safe, keep your distance, treat other people with kindness happiness, give them a smile and a wave, even though you can't give them a hug at the moment. And uh, we will all see each other very soon. So goodbye to everybody who's in the Meadowside Bubble uh, family this afternoon. Goodbye to the Meadowside family who are at home. And uh, tune in next time for assembly number two. I'll stay online now. And if anybody wants to put anything in the chat box, uh, they can do before they get ready to go home or go out to play. It's been lovely seeing you. Good say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.